For the next two, two and a half hours, I'm going to be going over two-way post-tension slab designs. Now, this seminar, or excuse me, this webinar is going to focus on effectively how to use um, generic software, let's call it. I, I, I will promote, I guess, in a certain way, um, PT Data, which is software that I use. But in general, since most of us are not designing by hand anymore, there are certain key aspects or, or generic common aspects to use. So whatever uh, brand you're using or whatever software you are using, hopefully this will help you design a two-way post engine slab and design it in such a way that you are, you know, quote unquote, within industry standards and not getting yourself either too thin of a slab or too thick of a slab that's too expensive. So moving forward, um, this webinar is based upon my book that I, work, I wrote with my business partner, Dirk Bondi. Uh, the book itself is broken up basically in the two halves. Uh, the first half is the undergraduate concrete course that's being used at UCLA and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Cal State LA, and the University of Portland. I think we have a couple others, but they're failing me at the moment. Um, now, the second half of the book is more of what we do in industry. Uh, parking garages, podium slabs, hotels, uh, very specific examples. There's a lot of photographs in there about construction observation issues, let's say diaphragm design. So if this is at all interesting to you and you want to expand your knowledge on post engine concrete, um, that would probably be a good purchase. And you can purchase the book through SK Goshen Associates. Uh, Amazon.com, I believe. Uh, believe has uh, the book is available as well, and I think there is a hard copy and a PDF electronic copy as well. So whatever works best for your office. Now moving forward, now going through uh, two-way slab design, and very generically, of course, uh, it's used in all types of buildings, parking structures, hotels, office buildings, apartments, whatever you have. A two-way slab is usually a very good option. Uh, for these type of structures. The columns are typically in a rectangular pattern, maybe a one, or excuse me, a two to one ratio between sides. There really is no hard and fast rule that if you are not 2.0 to 1.0, it's a one way slab. It's basically saying that you are not relying on walls and or beams for support. Basically the slab has to go in two directions uh, to be structurally stable. As I mentioned, there's no long walls or beams for continuous support. Everything is effectively done by the columns. Now, obviously, you're going to have elevator shafts and, and shear walls, potentially. But basically, there's no uh, primary wall and beam system. Obviously, the slab is designed in two directions to support loads. This is different than a one-way system where in one direction, the quote-unquote weak direction, you're only designing for temperature and shrinkage, and that's effectively for crack control. So basically, the major difference between a one-way slab design and a two-way is you're designing the slab in two principal directions rather than just one, uh, one direction. The columns themselves are typically relatively small unless you're dealing with a you know, extremely large high-rise type structure. Uh, anything probably less than 10 stories. The columns are, you know, very reasonably sized. You're 14 by 24, something like that. Uh, for for the most part, you're just designing the columns for axial load, um, minimal moment transfer, effectively because even on your edge column conditions, effectively because the cross section and the section modules of the slab is so much stiffer than the columns. The columns are effectively pin supports. So if you're getting any more than a, you know, 20 or 30 foot kips of moment for, a, let's say, a hotel or an office building or something like that, uh, you might want to check your model or your columns are a lot bigger than uh, they need to be. The shear design is controlled by punching and not obviously one-way shear or beam design, obviously because we don't have one-way shear or one-way slabs or beam design, but punching shear is the main critical shear design aspect of this system. Now, a two-way slab, regardless if it's post-tensioning or rebar, uh, our rebar only slab is best used to resist uniform type loading. Now again, parking structures, hotels, offices, uh, plaza deck, stuff like that. A lot of generic, or not generic, but a lot of uniform loading. If you're supporting very large point loads, whatever that is, whether it's a, a bank vault, um, if it's uh, trees, if it's landscaping elements that are very, very localized, it's a little challenging to resist those with the punching, or excuse me, with the two-way slab approach, simply because there's not a lot of depth in the system. It's not meant for localized reinforcement in that sense. So in those type of situations, you may have to have localized beams for those specific conditions. Um, so if you're doing a transfer deck and you have a lot of large columns coming down on your slab, the 
uniform loading for the surface loading would be the two-way slab design, and you may have to put in a localized beam for large point load. So again, uniform loading is best for a two-way slab uh, layout.